Hello and welcome to lesson 15.2 in the Atlas tutorial series. Today we're going to continue what we started in lesson 15.1 with the ice skater and class level methods. And this video will specifically look at how do we interact with different objects in our class level methods. For example, if we want our ice skater to skate to another object, let's say there's a penguin out on the ice lake, you would normally just put in skater skate to penguin. But now that we're using class level methods, it becomes a real possibility that when we export our object and put it into a new world, the penguin doesn't exist. If I try and reference a penguin that doesn't exist, it can cause my program to crash. But there are ways to allow your class level methods to interact with other objects, and we're going to do that through parameters. So we'll uh, take a look at that in lesson 15.2. Let's go over to Alice and let's get started. So here we are back in Alice, and you can see that I already have our uh, world loaded from Lesson 15.1. So we have our ice skater here on the ice lake. And when I click on this ice skater, you can see that slide left, slide right, and skate all still exist. So this is the same world that we had open before we closed it down to export our skater to another world. So this is going to be the starting point for making this next program, or at least looking at class level methods interacting with other objects. So if you don't have this from lesson 15.1, you're either going to want to go back and build the scene or build something really similar so you can follow along. When I hit play, I can see that I still have the skater just skating forward and then stopping, and that is caused by this skating skater.skate method. It's a lot of skates there in one sentence. Let's go ahead and add a new object to our ice lake. Click on Add Objects, let's go to Animals, and let's throw a penguin out here into the ice lake. So we'll have a penguin right here. We'll need to raise him off the ground a little bit so that he's not sinking into the ice. And maybe just turn him so that he's facing more towards the camera. And with that penguin out there, let's go ahead and... So when I hit play in this world, you can see that I still have the skater skating forward. The next thing I'm going to do is create an object in the world for our skater to interact with, or essentially just kind of skate to. So let's click Add Objects, go to the Animals Gallery, and let's pull a penguin from the Animals Gallery. So L-M-N-O-P. There we go. And I'm going to throw a penguin out here on the ice lake and raise him up off the ground a little bit so that he's not in the, uh, in the ice itself. And so this is the scene we're going to work with. My goal is to create a new method for our skater that will have her skate to the penguin. So let's uh, click on our skater and we can see I have slide left, slide right, and skate. Let's create a new method called skate to. And that brings up my method window here. In other words, the first thing that I'm going to have my skater do in skate to is turn to face the entire penguin. And then I want her to skate forward until she's within about three meters of the penguin. So like we did in, uh, I think it was the Lesson 13 series, I'm going to throw a while loop in here with a placeholder value of true and change that to skating skater is at least threshold away from object. And I want to say, for now, three meters, but you'll notice you can't pick three meters yet. So just put one meter in there for right now, away from the entire penguin. So this while loop will run as long as the skating skater is at least one meter away from the penguin. Of course, I want this to be three, not one. But now that I've put in my placeholder value, I now have the option to select other, select three, and now I have a while loop that will run as long as the skating skater is three meters away from the penguin. Now luckily, I already have a method built to have the skater skate forward. So I'm just going to have skate constantly run until the skating skater is three meters away from the penguin. So let's hit play and see what happens. I'm getting an error message that skate2 is not called. I Just like I did the first, I forgot to put that in my first method. So let's rectify that right now. Let's go over to my first method. And after the skating skater skates forward towards the camera, we're going to have the skater skate to the penguin. 
So we should see our skating forward animation. She'll now turn to face the penguin and skate forward until she's within three meters. So that's not quite close enough yet. And now it is. So our skating skater has stopped. The problem I've got right now is that Skate 2 will only work with this penguin. That's because inside the Skate 2 method, we are specifically calling on the penguin as the object that we need to go to. This will create a little bit of a problem if we try and export her to another world without addressing this. And in addition to just, there may be other objects in this world that we want her to be able to skate to. So similar to what we did in the last video, let's go ahead and export the skating skater out and import her into a new world. So right click on your skater, select save object, and I'm gonna save this one just in my Alice directory. And for now, I'm gonna call her skating skater version two. Hit save, and I now have this object that I can export into another world. I'm gonna come back to this world, so let's make sure to save this world so we can come back to it. And now that we have this world saved, let's go ahead and create a new world. And we'll create a water world for now. And just like I did in the 15.1 example, I want to import our skater here. So hit File, Import, and then in your Alice directory, let's find the Skating Skater version 2 and import. You'll see we immediately get an error message that pops up. It looks a lot more sinister than it is, but essentially what this is saying is, there's some references that this world isn't able to figure out. Now, pretty much these two lines right here say, hey, you've got a method that's calling to skate to a penguin, only there's no penguin object in this world. Would you like to continue setting all the values to none? If I do that, let's say yes, the skating skater will still enter the world. The problem I'll have with her if I select her and drag skate to over into my method window, I can see the penguin has been replaced with none. So that means the skate to method now in this world won't work. So we need to address this and use parameters so that our objects are universally usable in our other worlds. So let's go ahead and open up the world we were working on. I don't need to save this world, but let's open up the world we were in with our penguin. So we're back here now, and let's address this problem with our skate to method. Start by clicking on your skater. And this will bring up all the functions we have, uh, functions and methods we have access to. And we need to address the skate to method. So just take skate to and drag it into your method window. And now we have the skate to method that we can adjust. And we're gonna use parameters like we've done in some of the previous videos. Click on create new parameter. It's going to be an object parameter. And I'm gonna name it which object. Which object is gonna be the name for the parameter in which we put the object that we want the skater to skate to. So which object is the name of the parameter, hit OK. And now I'm going to replace the penguin with which object. So now, in my first method, I have to provide an argument to let my skater know which object I want her to skate to. So let's select the entire penguin. And now skate2 will take in a parameter called penguin and essentially this will look the exact same now because it's the same thing we were doing before except now the penguin is a parameter rather than hard-coded into our method. So that means I think she'll run two cycles of this skate forward method before she stops. Awesome. Similar to what we did with other parameters, this is going to let us say add another object and we'll go ahead and add a monkey to our scene. So we'll take the monkey and raise him off the ground a little bit and we'll start him maybe just a little bit behind our skater. And then we'll add a skate to method again. So select skating skater, skate to, and then have her skate over to the monkey after she goes to the penguin. And now we have the skater skating forward, going to the penguin, then going to the monkey. So we should see her go forward, turn to face the penguin, skate forward two cycles. That will put her within three meters. And now she should turn to face the monkey. 
and skate until she's within three meters of the monkey. Now that she's there, our animation stops and we're looking pretty good. Now that we've added a parameter to skate to, we can go ahead and export our skater again. So let's right click on her, select save object, and I'm going to name her skating skater version three for this example and save this world in case we want to go back to it. And just like we did last time, let's create a new world, a water world, and import our more clever skater. So hit file, import, and let's go ahead and put in version three of the skating skater. Now immediately I've noticed there's absolutely no errors. So by adding the parameters, we've eliminated that really nasty looking error when we first load this world. In clicking on our skater, I can see I still have access to all of these methods, and you can see skate to which object is one of them. And if I add another object, let's say we were to add a lion to this uh, water world, and let's put her down on the ground right there. So now if I take um, skate to which object, I can select an object that's in the world. Since a penguin isn't in the world, it's impossible to select the penguin. So I don't get the error because this method will only work if I pass in a valid object. So I, I hit play and she'll skate to the lion. So you may have actually been wondering what some of the methods in the built-in objects in Alice are. In this lion, for example, you can see we have start stance, walk forward, complete walk, roar charge, and I would say a good portion of the objects we've used in this tutorial up to this point have had additional methods here that are that were more advanced than simply move, turn, roll, and resize. And they're the exact same thing that we did with the skater. You can see our skater can slide left, right, skate, and skate to which object, just like our lion can start stance, walk forward, complete walk. So Let's uh, delete our skating skater here and just play around with the lion for a brief moment. I'm going to drag start stance into the world and let's do a complete walk and finally roar. So if I hit play, see the lion gets up, has a really terrible walking animation and then roars a little bit. And if I want to see what's going on inside these methods, I can do the exact same thing that I do with my skater. So select the lion. Let's take start stance and drag it over here into our method window. And I can see this is the code that's actually running when the lion is told to start his stance. If I want to see what complete walks, walk looks like, I'll take this, drag this over to my method window. And I've got a list of all the commands that the lion does when complete walk is called by the world. Take a look at Roar, and I can see Roar even has a sound imported with it, and I'll show you how to do that in uh, a subsequent video. But if you were ever wondering why some of the objects had these additional methods, that's really all it is. When Alice was being developed and these models were being put into the world, all the objects know move, turn, roll, resize, and, and so on. These methods up here are simply a combination of these more traditional methods that create more realistic looking animations. So that right there is pretty much going to uh, cover parameters in class level methods. Uh, let's go ahead and practice this in the lesson 15.2 challenge program. <laughs> So here we are in the challenge program world, and I don't have the world up just yet because I wanted to kind of show you what I did. Um, very similar to what we did in this lesson 15.1 and 15.2, I have created uh, some methods for both Natalie and Nate. And they have the ability to point at and uh, bob their heads. And you can see this like right here. If you go to the methods, I can see that Nate here is able to point at a person and bob his head at a given speed a certain number of times. So you'll see that once the animation starts. 
Uh, in addition, I do have some background music playing. Uh, this is the song that I downloaded royalty-free off of planetpurple.com. Or uh, purple, not Planet Purple, but uh, purpleplanet.com. The link is in the description, and that's a pretty cool website to check out, so I would definitely recommend uh, surfing over there if you're looking for music. You can see all the stuff that we've talked about in Lesson 15.1 and 15.2 is here. We have those class level methods and we're using parameters so that these individuals are able to be exported and used in any scene. So maybe they're going to go out uh, to a bunch of different dance clubs and we want them to keep their really cool dance moves. So let's go ahead and run the program here and see what it looks like. And that's really all the further I got before I decided to call it quits. Um, I had these big plans of maybe making some epic dance moves and, and having a dance battle, but uh, I figured I should quit while I was ahead. But I, I purposely made the head bobbing speed controllable by these parameters so that I could easily change how quickly it goes to try and keep them on beat maybe a little bit. And I gave them the ability to select who they're pointing at as a parameter so that when we export them to other worlds they can really dance with whoever happens to be in the dance club. So your job in this challenge program is to recreate a dance club scene, have at least two objects that have class level methods, and it doesn't really matter what their dance moves are now. I think using poses you could really make some much cooler dance moves than that, but uh, dress up the scene a little bit and make sure that you have at least two class level methods per object, and both of those class level methods should use parameters when they interact with other objects so that they can be exported without any errors. Now, of course, if you have any problems, you can leave those questions in the comments, and I would be perfectly happy to help you out. Anything I can do to make uh, using Alice a little bit easier for you, I'd be happy to do. So as always, thank you so much for your support of the Alice tutorial series. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.